In this video, we'll set up a digital tachometer for our engine. This will be another engine monitoring project using the super useful ESP32 microprocessor. In other projects, we set up engine temperature oil monitoring, oil pressure, and tank level monitoring with an ESP32. For this tachometer project, we'll be harnessing the power of that very same ESP32. The ESP32 functions as a remote hub equipped with numerous ports to connect to a wide variety of sensors. It will collect data from these sensors and transmit it wirelessly to our central system, a Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant. If you haven't set up an ESP32, don't worry. I have a separate video guide dedicated to that, providing a quick and easy setup. For this project, we'll use an optocoupler device, which is available for about $2. It's straightforward to implement. We simply connect two wires from the optocoupler to our engine's alternator, link the optocoupler to the ESP32, and perform some basic configuration in Home Assistant. The optocoupler will detect electrical pulses from the alternator stator in an isolated circuit using light, enabling RPM measurement, and it's all very easy to set up. Integrating tachometer monitoring into our smart boat system offers numerous advantages. It allows us to set up alerts for when engine RPMs exceed certain thresholds, as well as count engine hours. Additionally, our system provides access to historical data, enabling insights into fuel consumption patterns based on the engine's RPMs. The tachometer can also serve as a binary entity for other automations to indicate whether the engine is running or not. For example, the low oil pressure automation can now check if the engine is running before deciding if low oil pressure is actually an issue. Finally, you'll benefit from a sleek digital gauge on your smart boat dashboard, enhancing both functionality and aesthetics. So let's get started. Here we have the optocoupler device. In the video description below, I have all the details. Now this end, we connect to the alternator, and the other end, we connect to the ESP32. And there's a small uh, LED light which illuminates when there's an input signal coming. Now I have this ESP32 already provisioned, like in my ESP32 video. I have the, the red cable going to three volts, and the white goes to pin 25, and the black goes to the ground. So the red 3.3 volt cable we plug into the VCC terminal. The white cable from pin 25 we plug into the out terminal. There's only one data terminal for this. And the black from the ground plugs into the ground terminal. And the other end we have the cable, the black cable either comes from your engine ground or your, the ground of your alternator. The red cable is plugged into the plus terminal of the optocoupler and it goes to your alternator. Now on the alternator, it goes to either the W terminal or your stator terminal or your TACO terminal. It depends on the alternator. And sometimes if you have a smart regulator, you connect it to your smart regulator. There's a TACO output on there. Usually you have to share it with a the existing analog one. So you need to use like a, a connected double adapter. Normally you, you power the ASP32 with a buck converter, 12 volt to 5 volt that I have in my video description, but for this demo I'm just going to use a USB connector. And that's it, that's all the connections we need to connect the alternate tachometer to our smart boat. So here we are in Home Assistant. Now to have this uh, set up we need to have a ASP32 already provisioned, and I've done that already, so if you haven't done this just follow the instructions on my ESP32 video so we got ESP home and here's the base ESP32 I've set up I've just used the ESP web tools uh, to provision it to flash it with the ESP home so we have a look at it it's just got the basic YAML that's provided by the ESP home now what we need to do is go to the very end and then go to my website and if we go to the code tab and then scroll down to get to the tachometer YAML. Now here I've included uh, the YAML that you need to use to configure the 
the optocoupler with the ESP32. I've actually added some additional YAML in here, but I'll explain that when we paste it in. So I'll copy all that and just paste it here. Now, we just need to make sure I've pasted here with the logger level. We need to start off with the logger level of debug so we can actually calibrate the, um, the tachometer. So you need to just ch check above that debug is not, the log is not already included and it is. So we'll delete these, these few lines. So what this does, it sets up a, a pulse counter. It's a top of the platform in ESP Home, which will then will calibrate to become RPMs. Now you leave everything the same. Pin 25 is the pin we used in the, in the setup. So if you change the pin assignment in ESP32, that's, this is the only thing you need to change. And then, then we've got this clever thing to calibrate. So we're going to connect the optocoupler to the alternator, turn the engine on. And these are the figures for my engine. So at 1000 RPM, I was getting 15,200 revolutions on the optocoupler, 1200 I was getting this. And you can, you put in the data points like this and then ESP Home and the sensor will then calibrate a, a line for you or a, a calibration basically to transpose between the alternate stator revolutions to the your engine tachometer revolutions. It's really quite cool. Now the additional YAML I've added down here, you can get rid of if you don't want it. You, can, you don't need all of this from here down, it's just optional. But it basically allows you to add engine hours and also it allows you to uh, add, adds a binary sensor to say the engine is active, it's running or it's not running. I find, I find both of them useful, so I've added it here for you. So what we need to do, we've added this YAML in here, so we save it. Go back, just check the validate the install. Okay, it's all fine, and we install wirelessly OTA over the air. Now this takes a while, so I'll speed it up. Okay, so it's compiled and successfully uploaded the configuration to the ESP32. Now it should start the logging. So here the logs have started. So I'll just stop it to explain what we see here. What we need to look for is just the engine tacker, the received, received counter, pulses per minute. Now this is what we're going to need to calibrate. We're going to have to calibrate this with the actual engine RPM. So the procedure is like this. We, we start the engine and then we set the engine to a known uh, revolutions per minute, either using your existing analog uh, gauge, or you can just uh, use a strobe light or an app on the phone, which emits a strobe. And you put a reflective tape onto your flywheel and you can measure your engine RPM like that. We're gonna set up some data points. So we're gonna set it to say, at a thousand engine RPMs, we're going to have to look at how many pulses per minute it is, and we note that down. And then increase the engine to 1200, note down the pulses per minute, 1400, note down the pulses per minute, etc. etc. So I'll, I'll quickly just start the engine just to show you. It's probably going to be a little bit noisy. Now, with the engine going, I'll stop this again so we can just see what's happening. So you can see. Of the received counter now is 1300 pulses per minute, which is about correct. My engine's running at idle. It's about, with the calculations I have, it's putting out 860 RPMs. So this is what you just have to measure. Just take have to take note of this figure here for different Evren engine revolutions. I won't go through the whole procedure because it's quite noisy and it, it won't hear me well, but it's quite straightforward. So the first one you need to have zero to zero. And then for a thousand RPMs, I found that it was 15,200. For 1200 RPMs, it was 18,200, the pulses per minute, et cetera, et cetera. I only took four, and I, with four, I found it's reasonably accurate, but you can keep on going if you like. That's all you need. Okay, you're gonna change it and then compile it again. And, and you can always go back and recalibrate this YAML. Now, once you finish this calibration, what you need to do is go back to change this logger level don't leave it to debug because it's going to put out lots of uh, messages all the time and slow the ESP32 down. So put it back to info once you've you finished and re recompile and upload the configuration to the ESP32. So let's put these entities on a, on a dashboard quickly to see what they look like. 
um, there's a number of ways we can do this. We can go settings, integrations, ESP Home, that one device. So these are the ones, these are the four sensors it's created. So we can add that to a dashboard. I created a dashboard earlier, an empty one, just for this demonstration called Taco. So then add it to that dashboard. Let's go to that dashboard. Okay, it's not running at the moment, so it's zero. But okay, so let's add a, a gauge. There's that one, there's RPM. From zero maximum my engine maximum is 2400 fuel gauge severity uh let's put the put it for the idle my my engine idle is around 800 and 2000 for the yellow and the reds up to 2200 done and i'll just turn back on the engine so now it's showing the my engine rpm which is correct now we have these other fields here which is the engine active which is the binary which you can use in other automations and the engine hours uh, you can you reorganize this this is just I put it onto this dashboard just for this demonstration but obviously you put it in a nice dashboard probably with your other engine instrumentation how easy was that thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating if you found this video helpful and informative I would appreciate if you hit the like button below and if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.